Okay, um, in this video, we're going to introduce the concept of double integrals and or double integration and some of the techniques that are involved in evaluating uh, double integrals. And to help us get started, we sketched out this simple diagram of a rectangle. It goes from x equals a to x equals b and from y equals c to y equals d and say that we want to find the uh, area of this figure. Here we have a shaded region. It's of width delta x and height delta y. So its area is going to be simply delta y times delta x. And if we add it up, all the areas of all these shaded regions that we could fit in, going from y equals c to y equals d, that would be the approximate area then of this vertical strip. And that's what we state right here. This is the area of one of the shaded regions, and we're going to add up all these areas that we can fit in, going from y equals c to y equals d. So, notice here, the summation is in the y direction, and delta x essentially just remains constant. Now, to get the total area, we could add up the area of all the vertical strips that we could fit in here, proceeding from x equals a to x equals b, and that's what we state right here. Only the area of any one of these vertical strips is this, so we could take this summation here and put that right here and that's what we state here the total area is really this double summation here um, here we have delta y delta x the area of a shaded region we're adding up all those shaded regions that exist from y equals c to y equals d to get the area of a vertical strip and then we're adding up the area of all those vertical strips that we can fit in proceeding from x equals a to x equals b. And that would give us the approximate area there of our figure. Now, here, instead of having a shaded region like this, if we get an infinitesimally small region of area of dimensions dx and dy, we add all of those up, that would then give us precisely the area of the figure in question. But if we're going to add dy's and dx's, we don't do it with a double summation, now we do it with a double integral. But you can see that setting up this double integral here is entirely analogous to what we have just accomplished here. Now, two things that we want to mention at this point. Um, when you see a double integral in this form of dy dx, then that means that you are adding up shaded regions essentially vertically to give some type of vertical strip, and then you're going to add up all the vertical strips going from x equals a in this case to x equals b. When you see, also, when you see a double integral, the way you evaluate it is you start with the innermost integral first and just ignore the rest. Evaluate that one first, then afterwards evaluate the other integrals that remain. Now, one thing that's very important here, you want to make certain that you have your proper limits here for y. Here we're adding up shaded regions going from y equals c to y equals d. So in this case, of course, determining the limits is very simple. Um, in some of the future videos, when we examine uh, more complicated situations, it's not going to be quite so simple as in this case. Same thing for the limits on the dx integral. Here it's very simple. x just goes from a to b. For some of the other examples, that might not be quite so simple. And when we're setting up the double integral, we have to assure ourselves that indeed we have the 
the correct limits in place. Now, this one here, of course, would be very easy to evaluate because it's so trivial. Um, we start with the innermost integral. Well, the integral of dy is just y, and y is going from c to d. So when we, when we evaluate this inner integral here, it's just going to be d minus c, which is a constant. And then we have this integral left of dx. d minus c, that just came from evaluating the integral of dy going from limits y to c to y equals d. And then we have this integral that is left over from x equal a to x equal b. Of course, this is just going to give us x going from a to b. So our double integral is just going to be d minus c times b minus a. Here it's very easy to evaluate it, obviously. But when we get to the more complicated examples, the principle is the same. Start with the innermost integral and work your way out to the other ones that remain. And again, we'll have some more complicated examples that we'll work to and try to illustrate this in more complicated situations. Um, let's take the same problem, though. And here, instead of constructing a vertical strip, we'll construct a horizontal strip. So here we have our shaded regions. Each one has a width of dx and a height of dy. Each one is going to be of area dx dy. And now we're going to add up all the shaded regions that we can fit in going from x equals a to x equals b. And if we do that, that's going to be the approximate area then of this horizontal strip. And that's what we state right here. This is the area of one of the shaded regions. And we're going to be adding up all the shaded regions we can fit in going from x equal a to x equal b. In this situation now, then, we're adding in the x direction, and dy is just essentially constant. Now, if we wanted to get the total area, then, we could do it by adding up all the horizontal strips that we could fit in, proceeding from y equals c to y equals d. And that's what we state right here. But again, now, the area of each one of these horizontal strips, that's this. So here, our total area is going to be approximately this double summation. This is the area of one of the shaded regions. And we're going to be adding up all those areas going from x equals a to x equals b to give us a horizontal strip. And then we're going to add up the area of all the horizontal strips that we can fit in, going from y equals c to y equals d. Uh, and again, instead of having the shaded regions here, if we had infinitesimally small areas of dimensions dx and dy, and added all of those up, that would give us exactly the area of the uh, figure in question. Only now, instead of having a double summation like we have here, it's going to be a double integral of dx dy. So, two things we want to point out again here. Number one, when you see a double integral in this form, dx dy, now you know then that you're dealing with horizontal strips that are being constructed going from x, in this case it's just from x equals a to x equals b so the limits are very easy to determine and we're going to add up all those horizontal strips going from in this case it's just from y equals c to y equals d so again 
the limits on the interval are very easy to determine here. If it's like this, then you know you're dealing with vertical strips. And again, to evaluate this trivial double integral, it's the same as before, start with the innermost integral first of dx. That's just going to give us x going from b to a. So that's just going to be b minus a. And then we're going to have the integral dy. y goes from c to d. This is going to give us d minus c then. So this the double integral here is just b minus a times d minus c, giving us the area of this simple figure here. Uh, obviously, when we get to the other videos, it's not going to be so trivial, but the principle is the same. Start with the innermost integral first, and then work your way to the outer integrals. And those really are the two main principles we wanted to point out. When you see a double integral, um, to evaluate it, you start with the innermost integral first, and if you see it in this form, you know you're dealing with a horizontal strip type situation. If it's in this form, then you're dealing with constructing vertical strips. And again, we'll have some more complicated examples that uh, will illustrate these principles. So, come back and join us for some more videos, and we'll try to work some more complicated problems.